Hi guys, how are you doing? Welcome back. I'm going to show you what settings you need to change or how you need to prepare your ESXi host if you want to use it in a VCF installation. Now, there are specific requirements for having hosts run in a VCF setup. And there are a few things you need to change on the host after installing VMware ESXi. And that will make sure that when you deploy VCF, it will go through all the steps to configure VCF flawlessly. Let's get into it. Now, there are some settings you need to make sure that are there on your ESXi hosts. I have four ESXi hosts. This is a nested setup. It's a lab environment, so a nested setup is fine. You need to make sure that the hardware is configured on a, in a specific manner with specific requirements, specific settings for CPU and memory, and also the network interfaces. So let's grab the first ESXi host and all four ESXi hosts are basically the same from a hardware and configuration perspective. That's something you need to make sure is in your environment also the case, right? So you want to make sure that all the ESXi servers, all the hosts in your environment are actually configured the same. So let's grab the first one. It's already powered on. And let's go to the VM hardware. As you can see here, I have eight vCPUs dedicated to it. I have memory, at least 56 gigabytes of RAM. I have three hard disks configured on the ESXi server on this host. The first hard disk, that's the 16 gigabyte one that will be used to install ESXi. That's the boot disks as well. Now, the second one I will be using for vSAN. vSAN is part of the VCF installation, and this is the cache disk for vSAN. Now, the third one, this is my data disk for vSAN. This is the storage where all my workloads will be stored. So at least three disks you need in that host. And then you need at least two physical adapters connected to that, uh, to that ESXi host. What I've done here is on my main ASXI, on my main server, basically, I've created a virtual switch with the name VCF, as you can see here. And in that VCF V switch, I have two network adapters defined for my ESXi host. And once again, this is the same setup for all the ESXi hosts, which I will be using in my VCF installation. Another important setting for a nested setup. If you're doing a nested lab setup like I'm doing, you need to make sure that the CPU in your nested ESXi host has the option hardware virtualization enabled. If you don't do this, well, basically you're not able to install virtual machines on that nested ESXi host and the setup of VCF will fail. So make sure that you have enabled this option if you're doing this in a nested setup. Now, if you're doing a nested lab setup like I'm doing here, you want to make sure that if you're going to the physical host, that you have a additional switch created. That's what I've done here. I've created a additional switch on my actual physical host, which I've labeled VCF. I've allowed all the VLANs in there and I've changed some settings for security. I've changed the Prometheus mode, the MAC address changes, and for transfers, I put it all to accept. You can see that this physical or this virtual switch, it doesn't have any physical adapters connected to it. This is fine because all the virtual machines connected to this V switch, they will have access to the internet using a firewall router. As you can see here, there are already several virtual machines connected to this V switch. This is a VCF um, demo and uh, setup I was testing. In this VC on this VCF switch, there is a OpenSense firewall router connected. This OpenSense firewall router, it has a interface in the VCF virtual switch and another interface in the VM network on my actual host. So this is basically doing a double net setup to allow internet to the VCF environment. Okay, so now we are logged in on that esxi vcf This is one of the hosts I'm going to use to deploy VCF. Now, if you log into this host, 
the first thing you need to make sure is that the host name of the server is actual the actual host name you're going to use on that VCF deployment. As you can see here, the host name of, of this server is esxi onevcfcf Now, how do I make sure that this is happening? Let's look at my firewall. So this is the OpenSense firewall router I'm using to give internet access and also the VLANs and all the networking stuff I need for VCF. This is the firewall which is actually providing it. This firewall has one interface in that VCF switch I just showed you uh, just now. And the other one is the interface connected to my actual physical network. So as you can see here, I'm at the DHCP uh, settings of that OpenSense firewall, and I have made reservations in the DHCP settings for all my ESXi hosts. These reservations, they are corresponding to the host names I'm going to use for all those hosts so that I can make sure that every ESXi host, which I'm going to use in that VCF deployment, will have the correct DNS name. Because if you add a static mapping on OpenSense or PFSense, this is also the DNS entry, the static DNS entry, which will be configured in the DNS server of the firewall. So if I do, let's do a quick pin. If I pin the ESXi, 01.vkarch.pcf, I will get the actual IP address there, but also the reverse DNS needs to be correct as well. That's where that static mapping is helping out. So if I do a ping on just the IP address of my ESXi host, you will see that it will resolve the actual DNS name. This is a reverse DNS record lookup for my ESXi host. Now you have to make sure that every ESXi host has a valid forward DNS record and a reverse DNS record. This is the way you're doing it on PFSense and OpenSense. I'm sure your firewall has entries for this as well. Or maybe you're using an Active Directory domain controller with the with the Microsoft DNS. There is also in the Microsoft DNS you can set up the forwards and the reverses for all the ESXi hosts. Now another important thing to do is make sure that the certificate is actually the certificate of the host name. The first time that you set up your ESXi host, there will be a local host certificate deployed because uh, maybe ESXi was not provisioned with uh, certain provisioning tools in your environment and it was installed manually, or it didn't take into account that there should be a, a certificate there corresponding to the host name. So, there is a official VMware article uh, which describes how you can reset your SSL certificate to match it with the host name here as well. So when I go to my certificate information, I can see that this is the certificate supplied for my ESXi host and it corresponds with the actual name, the actual DNS entry I'm going to use when installing VCF and having this host uh, configured with VCF. Another thing I can always configure is make sure that my management interface on my ESXi host is configured and it has a static IP address because I don't want to take the chance that when I reboot this ESXi host, somehow it will get another IP address using DHCP. So I always make sure that um, I have a static IP address configured here. Another important thing is make sure that you configure your management network. This is the ESXi host. As you can see here, it's the ESXi 01.vcash.pcf. Uh, I made sure that I configured my management network with the correct VLAN, but also with a static IP. Now, in that IP configuration, make sure that the default gateway is set as well. And of course, you have the DNS configuration. I always enter the host name of, the, of my ESXi host here as well. One question about storage always pops up. That when you install VCF, you need at least three disks in your ESXi host. Right? I showed you, as you can see here, this is the ESXi host 01. As I, uh, I have configured that 16 gigabyte disk, this is the boot disk. And then I have a cache disk for vSAN, and then I have the actual vSAN storage disk there as well. 
when installing your ESXi uh, host with the standard VMware image or that uh, image provided by your uh, hardware vendor, you don't have to create data stores there. The only data store you will have is, of course, the data store that, that disk where VMware itself is installed. The other disk, you don't have to do anything. During the setup, during the configuration of VCF, the Cloud Builder appliance will see those disks and actually configure vSAN to use the specified uh, disk for caching and also for the actual storage. So you don't have to create data stores on those disks beforehand. Something to remember, it uh, is not needed. It will be automatically done during uh, setup. And then the last thing I always, always change here and set up accordingly in my network is NTP, time. So you have to configure time services on every ESXi host, regardless of if it, it will be uh, provisioned by, or if it will uh, be provided by your DHCP server, you have to configure the time service on every ESXi server. And the best thing to do, of course, is to point it to a central time server I already made a video about setting up NTP with a centrally uh, service in your network. Now, as you can see here, this is the ESXi01. Again, uh, go to manage. In the system tab, you will have the time and date, and you have to make sure that the time server stops and starts with the host. And of course, that it is pointing to a valid NTP server. This same NTP, NTP server should be used when setting up the Cloud Builder uh, appliance. If you're not using a provisioning tool to install uh, ESXi, this service is um, not enabled in a default ESXi setup. You have to enable it in a default ESXi setup and configure it. And basically that's it if you install ESXi. Out of the box, you need to make sure that the DNS entries are there, your management interface is configured, your certificates are corresponding to that host, and of course, the configuration of NTP. If you're using hardware specific to a vendor, make sure that that hardware is on the actual compatibility list for uh, vSphere 8 and VCF 5.1.1. It's always good to check that your hardware is compatible with the versions of the software you're going to use. And make sure that if there are specific firmware upgrades or drivers to be installed, you have them installed on the ESXi host before actually going to prepare and use them for VCF. So for now, thank you for watching. And as always, don't forget to click on the like and subscribe button below. It will help my channel out a lot. If you have comments, leave it in the comment section. I'll get to them as soon as possible. Take care and see you soon. Bye.